Good morning, ladies and gents. So I'm back with another Conquest Play video. This time around, we're going to be exploring everything that you need to know for Season Scorpio. Before we get into the video, though, hit that subscribe button if you want to be kept up to date with the latest and greatest of Conqueror's Blade. So, the Season Scorpio is going to be landing as a free patch for Conqueror's Blade on the 24th of November, so we have not got long. I am going to explore everything that you need to know right now. We have not yet got the new weapon class, so that will not be in this video. However, once we actually get the preview event, about the new weapon that I will obviously make a separate video about that but this is literally everything else that is coming this season we will be exploring the battle pass we will be exploring the units we will be exploring the brand new doctoring system as well if you take one piece of advice away from this video do not spend do not salvage your doctrines or your tree sites right now save everything for the new season because this new doctrine system is going to be producing some absolutely dirty dirty new doctrines and i'm going to be covering everything you need to know in a minute about that i will leave that to the end so we've just had the preview event that's where i currently am stood uh we've had the official uh content cre um, content creators community managers giving us everything that we need to know about the new season uh i'm gonna try and condense it down into one nice bite-sized video for you so i'm gonna be going through stuff fairly rapid but i'm gonna try and cover everything as best i can so starting off with the battle pass same kind of setup as usual uh, we have got 100 levels of fun, frolics and goodies if you have the actual battle pass, which there is still a competition going on my other video. I will leave the link down in the description box below for you to enter that competition for one of two battle passes as well. You only have one day left to enter, so make sure you enter it right now. Uh, if you have a paid battle pass, you will be getting a reward every single level of the battle pass plus 50% extra glory as well so you actually be leveling up through the battle pass a lot quicker if you do not have the paid if you just have the free then you'll be getting a reward every two to three levels so you do get a few kind of nice things throughout the battle pass obviously the levels that you really want to know about are level 100 which is the seasonal attire quite nice quite like it actually um, the epic schematics level 90 these I am going to cover in the Doctrine system, but these are these pure wisdoms. You are definitely going to be wanting to get as many as you can. Uh, the free, you get the Legendary Artillery Selection Box at, I believe that was level 85. Loads and loads of kind of schematics, crafting materials. I will cover what these are as well. These are new kind of gems and stuff for the new Doctrine system. Level 70, you get the Horse Attire. Moving on through, moving on through, get Bronze, Honor. Glory, uh, Blades, Treat Ice, loads and loads of stuff, like the usual stuff. Um, everything that we have come to expect from the Battle Pass, I've just scrolled through all of those first kind of 100 levels for you there. This is the level 1 armor. Again, not really my cup of tea, but I know some people will probably be quite liking this. Do like the level 100 armor, not so keen on this armor, but you will be getting this if you get the battle pass straight away, so this is like the level 1 reward for it. Moving on into the weekly challenges, you can see that nothing's really changed in the UI, obviously we will be working through our weeks in terms of challenges, every load of challenges will give you a load of glory which will level up your battle pass a little bit quicker. Seasonal challenges I will cover in a minute because we want to cover the new units in just a second. Campaigns. So this is the date of the season's season and we have been told that the main capital is going to be in Lingyong so that's not going to open up until a little bit later on but obviously starts on 24th of November will be ending on the 5th of February so it's a fairly long season actually this one it's almost three months so we got plenty of time to actually play around with stuff, play play with the new units, all the rest of it. Um, the territory war rewards have been reworked. We have not got a lot of information about that yet, but information about that will come out throughout the season. The rewards end of territory war, so right at the campaign end, that has been reworked. That has been thought about. We have asked the question about shot callers as well, so people that primarily sit in strategist view and actually direct about. They are. Oh, they have been thought about and they will be getting separate rewards as well. We've already been given that answer. What those rewards are, we don't know yet, but as soon as I know, I will, of course, let you know. Obviously, each of the campaigns are broken down into different dates. They are using the seasonal uh, seal system. 
Uh, I believe they are using the seasonal seal system again. I'm not 100% sure because it actually says here that the highest deployable unit is level 5 stars. So I'm not quite sure. That might just be a uh, translation kind of error on the PTR server. If someone official or someone can just kind of comment, that would be great to kind of tidy that up. Um, everything else is pretty much the same though. Seasonal runes I am going to cover. I'm, what I'm going to do is just show you all of the runes really really slowly you can pick out you can read the ones that you really want to read pause the video if you need to actually read them not a huge amount of changes glaive there is one that has changed obviously i will cover that in a minute um the new weapon because it's not been announced it's not been really done yet obviously these ones haven't really been announced these uh runes for it so we will be getting those on the 6th of december when we get to actually explore the new weapon but i'm just going to very slowly scroll through all these i don't play any other weapon class enough to really know what's good what's bad to be honest so i'm just going to scroll through them really really slowly so you can have a proper look at them i am going to go into the glaive ones because that is something that i do know about uh, got a battle, so Guria is exactly the same as it was before. Gamez is exactly the same as it was before. However, for us Glaive users, there is a brand new one, and that is the Kalahar Rod, which, using a skill, grants immunity to all control effects except winded for four seconds. That is going to be huge. And whether you play Glaive as I do in medium, or whether you play Glaive as a heavy armor, that. Uh, that rune is going to be massive. It's only a two star power one as well, so it can be coupled with the jumping off the horse and triggering off God of Battles, or triggering off God of Battles actually affects you by 20% more. So it can be used by, with both of those runes as well, which is really, really good. It's going to be really interesting to see just how much of a difference this actually <laughs> makes to the glaives, because uh, I swear I get CC'd all the time, it's freaking annoying. Going on down, going on down, all the armor ones look fairly similar to what they have been in the past. To be honest, no real big changes here. Runes are always the one that I'm kind of most interested in, although this season I'm definitely more interested in the new Doctrine system, which I will be covering in just a second. But those are all your runes for the season. Like I said, nothing too major. I don't play any of the other weapon classes enough to really kind of go through those and talk about those apparently this longsword one is really really good i've heard that they've had a bit of a longsword kind of rework not entirely sure uh you're the man to talk to about that would be mr night stalker because he is a mr longsword so head over to his channel if you uh want to know anything more about the longsword and stuff um but glaive pretty happy with those runes pretty happy that they're keeping actually some of the uh old ones and giving us that new one Seasonal store, this is unfortunately I know gonna disappoint people. There is no I don't believe there are no or I don't believe there are any new hero uh skins for the weapons this season. Unfortunately they have just got antique weapon skins back in again, which is a real real shame. Would have been nice to see some uh, new kind of weapon skins coming in. They do have these guild braces though, which are pretty swift, pretty nifty. If you're into like scorpions and stuff and looking cool. Apparently these actually act similar to the crown it back in the french season where it doesn't actually take up an arm slot you just kind of equip it and it's there it doesn't take up a slot from anything else so that's quite nice so if you do want to stick on these uh guild braces then obviously 1500 blades and they are all yours uh, another unit kit right there and then obviously some more horse attire if you're into your horse attire and stuff i'm not personally to be honest but going through i'm just going to show you all of the different skins which are coming, the antique skins which are coming. Scottish season seems to be the uh, the one they've really focused on this season. Um, this was season nine as well, the tyrant stuff. So a couple different choices in there. If you're not interested in any of that, of which I'm not really, to be honest, I'm going to be blasting all of my uh, all of my blades on treatise schematics, powder silver. Always, always recommend, especially if you're new into the game, always pick up these because they're so, so cheap and they will give you a bit of an edge early game. Always, always pick those up when you get enough blades as well. Lotus Water. We are going to be having a Lotus Water event uh, partway through the season, so I think we're going to be getting a lot of it anyway. But if you are finding that actually I'm, you've got a lot of doctrines that you want to take off of units, but onto other units, then Lotus Water is fairly cheap in the store as well. So that's quite a nice little uh, Brucey bonus to keep in there if you are interested in that. So going back to seasonal challenges, we have we are getting three brand new units this season. We are getting the blue uh, blue Jangus. We are getting the uh, purple camel lancers 
And then we are getting the ha tier 5 Hasha Hashins some part through the season. Obviously this new weapon class we do not know anything about yet really. Um, I will keep an eye on that says opens in 11 days. I will check back in 11 days and see if it's opened yet. Um, but obviously the system of unlocking the units is the same as every other season. You have to go through the blues to get the purples and you then have to go through the purples to get the gold. So each one is broken down into pages of challenges. So you can either pay these off for sovereigns or you can just blast through and grind them. Um, I always grind definitely the purples and the blues because it's just so easy usually. You only need to do like a couple of pages for the blues. It's usually only a few pages for the... Uh, I keep pressing the wrong one because I keep forgetting the camel lances and the purples. Um, it's only a few pages, so it's quite an easy grind to uh, blast through it. Um, so, the Jangjus. So, these guys, I'm just going to bring up all the stats. You can actually have a look at their stats. Some of these attributes may change slightly because sometimes they do from the PTR version to the official version. However, skills and the unit orders and everything usually are pretty much the same. So, Desert Warriors. I'm just going to flash these up. I'm not going to read them to you, but these are throwing knives kind of guys. And their health is very, very low. Their defenses are very, very low. So they are going to be very, very squishy. So it's going to be interesting to see just actually how good these guys are. Just going to flash up the veterancy bonuses for these as well, just so you can have a quick read through, a quick see. Because I know people do enjoy reading this kind of stuff. I do actually personally quite enjoy reading it. Um, it's always interesting to kind of have a look at the new units and see what people are thinking of them in terms of build and all the rest of it. Um, the Camel Riders, apparently these are an anti-cav cav, um, from what I've been reading, so it's going to be interesting to see how these work. Looking at the size of their pikes or their lancers, actually they are fairly long, so if kind of thinking about four brachios and stuff, if the attacking point is actually at the tip of their uh, lance, then yeah, they are going to probably decimate quite a lot of different cavalry units, which will be interesting to see. Um, it's yeah, I, I I like the fact that we are getting something other than just horses in now. Um, until they're here, I can't really make much kind of mention of them obviously as soon as they come in what i will do is obviously make uh videos in regards to each of the separate units just to kind of show you how to build them how i find them first impressions all that kind of stuff just quickly going through all the different veterancy bonuses so if you want to read these properly obviously as i'm going through these just pause the video and then you'll be able to have a proper read of them but most of them are the usual kind of stuff really Finally, that one there. So, moving over to the Hasha Hassins or the Hassa Assassins. Um, I can't still keep mentioning saying that. No, totally wrong. Uh, four pages to unlock these. Pretty standard, really. Um, looking at these, again, the health is very, very low. There's only 10 in the actual unit. Leadership is very, very low, though, for a tier 5 unit. They made mention of this on the official stream. It is really, really low. Again, defenses are very low. These units are going to be very, very squishy. However, their attacking damage is very, very high, especially the, the actual base damage stat is really, really high. So these guys, I think, are going to do a huge amount of damage um, if you manage to position them properly into something. There was something mentioned about their smoke bomb as well. Apparently, if you use the smoke, then chances of something being targeted is really really reduced so i'm not sure if it's you or your unit or their unit it wouldn't make sense if it was their unit but um it's gonna be interesting to see just how that works to be honest because the alchemy smoke was a little bit lackluster really so hopefully they've kind of fixed that now um looks like they've actually got action points though which will be interesting to see how that kind of works out for them but there's some really long lines for their uh veteran so I'm just going to quickly go through these just to show you exactly what we're going to be getting. So 
So those are the three new units. Obviously, like I said, we're not getting this yet for a little while. I will show you that as soon as we get it. Um, but we have covered everything, I think. We've covered the overview, the battle pass, weekly challenges, seasonal challenges, campaign, seasonal rooms, and the seasonal store. We are going to be getting, I believe, a rework on two maps as well. As you can see, some of the UI has changed a little bit. It looks a little bit kind of smart, a little bit tidier, which is nice. They have changed up Conqueror City a little bit. It's a little bit nicer, which is quite nice. Everything else is kind of looking pretty much the same, though. Um, all the attire stuff and everything pretty pretty much come exactly the same um, You have to get to a certain point to unlock this new function. I think I've covered pretty much everything else So then the last thing that we need to cover is this new doctrine system. So this is the doctrine or alchemy It looks a little bit scary when you first look at it. However, it is quite simple It's quite easy to understand and I am going to guide you through it right now now just a quick caveat. We have been given every single new rune that is coming into the game. There are leadership runes, however, these are not, they are not coming into our version of the game. The only reason we have them on the PTR version is they thought that we may want to actually test out all the units so we wanted so they wanted us to have doctrines which would bring those leadership costs down just so we can go out and have a proper kind of play with them um, but i am repeating these leadership doctrines are not coming to our version of the game I think I made that quite clear. Okay, everything else though, we are going to be getting all these and there are some proper juicy doctrines in here, I'll tell you, proper juicy. I've unlocked a few already just playing with the system. They are some real, real dirty, naughty, juicy doctrines and I'm looking forward to actually unlocking as many of these as I can in the uh, when the patch drops for us. So. Like I said right at the start of the video, do not use any of your doctrines or tree types right now. Save them all for the brand new season because, because, ladies and gents, we now have a system where we can actually combine doctrines and get something useful from it, which is going to be quite nice. Now, there was a little bit of confusion of this during the preview event. I don't feel this was explained as properly as it should have been, maybe, but I'm not blaming anyone. I'm not having dig or anything at anyone. It's just quite an easy thing to do, I think. But... Every time you combine doctrines in this doctrine alchemy, you will get an epic doctrine. That is a hundred percent chance for an epic doctrine. So even if I combine three of these greens, which these are the new icon, the new token, new wisdom kind of things that you can get from like the battle pass and stuff. Um, these take place, so these will fill up a slot instead of one of an actual doctrine. So if you don't have any purple doctrines that you want to actually get rid of, you can just use eight of these instead. Once you've obviously unlocked them and everything to save you actually spending doctrines in this, because once you actually use these, they're gone. They combine into one and that is the one that you will get. Now, this is where it got a little bit confusing and I've asked the question, cleared it up, it is a definite. You will, so even with eight green doctrines, all right, you will get one epic doctrine. What this does affect, however, the rarity of these affects just how good that epic doctrine is. So you will have, obviously, 43% chance to get a tier one epic doctrine or an epic wisdom. Tier two is obviously a tier two doctrine, tier two epic doctrine or an epic wisdom. And then after that, it will either be a tier three, a tier four or a tier five epic doctrine. So every single time you combine, even with eight greens, you will get an epic doctrine. I need to make that really clear. So. What this is, obviously, so I've just got my Epic Wisdom there, which was that higher chance. So that actually takes place now. I can use that instead of one of the Epic Doctrines that I don't want to get rid of. So if I combine eight of these, obviously because they are a higher rarity than those green ones, this gives me a higher chance to get a better Epic Doctrine. Pure Wisdoms. This is something that was also kind of missed out. Um, I think it's just because they didn't have one to actually show this. But this will increase the values of these this grading here. So obviously this is your tier 1 chance, this is your tier 2, 
This is tier 3, tier 4, tier 5. If you use a pure wisdom, that will increase it a fair bit, to be honest. So save your pure wisdoms for your epic wisdom or epic doctrine combinations rather than your greens because this will just elevate the chances of you getting a better epic doctrine even more so save your pure wisdoms i do not think we are going to be getting many throughout the season so just really kind of save them because you are going to be wanting to unlock certain epic doctrines such as this because this is absolutely insane there are apparently over either 150 or 180, I can't remember which they said, brand new doctrines which are only obtainable through the system. However, the reason I am saying save all of your doctrines and everything right now is just in case it does pull from the new pool of doctrines. We don't want to be missing out on it. I'm going to be saving all of my doctrines until the new season drops. I am going to be making sure I do not salvage anything from this point on. Every doctrine I do not want, I am going to be putting into this system because of just even that small chance of getting something really, really good. It's just worth it. It's just totally worth it. I will probably make another video, an in-depth video about this because I can see a lot of people are going to have questions about this. Um, one thing also that I need to make sure that you know is the stats, so the actual kind of stats on these doctrines have no effect whatsoever on what doctrine you pull. The only thing that affects what kind of doctrine you pull are the grading or the rarity of these so you will have obviously a better chance pulling a better epic doctrine with eight epic doctrines in here compared to eight uncommon doctrines it does not matter they could be all be the same they could all be different it has no effect whatsoever on what doctrine you pull other than obviously the chance of pulling a better one that's all it affects So like I said, I'm going to make a separate video kind of about all that because I can see that's going to be quite confusing for, for quite a few people and I don't blame you because it's, um, it's a brand new system coming to the game and I think it's going to be a really well used system once people actually get their head around how to use it properly and what affects what. So I think I've covered absolutely everything that we need to cover in the season. Are you looking forward to the new season? It is, like I said, going to be dropping as a free patch on the 24th of November make sure you are there so we've got less than a week make sure you enter the competition the glean link in my description box below for a chance to win a battle pass you have less than a day to enter make sure you enter it very very quickly if you are watching this right now I'm just about to start streaming or I may have already started streaming so definitely want to hit me up over on Twitch as well because we got Twitch drops going baby and you don't want to lose those um, everything else um, all the uh, new weapon and everything I will cover when we get that on the 6th of December. We are having a content creators versus content managers, uh, community managers event next week as well, which I'm going to be part of. I'm going to try and record that and make some videos out of that one. Everything though, I think I've covered. If you've got any questions at all, let me know down below and we'll uh, I'll try and cover those for you as well. Thank you very much for watching. As always, folks, I hope you enjoyed this one. Any questions, like I said, let me know. Hit me up over on Twitch. Hit me over on TikTok as well. Really trying to grow that. So if you've got a TikTok uh, account, please, please go follow me on TikTok. I'm really, really trying to grow it. Thank you very much for watching, though, folks. I hope you enjoyed this one. I've tried to keep it as short and precise as I kind of can. And I hope to catch you out in the desert.